about 300 miles from home. They made the, the five-hour trip for the Highland Nationals today. 966 International, it's Kong the Gopher. How many of you folks here tonight are ready for a little tractor pull action? Are you guys with me? Help me out, make a little noise. Oh, come on, Highland. Let's show us, man. Were the pro stocks last class at um, at uh, Highland this year? I don't think so. No, I think Super Farms were. Okay, you were, were pros second to last. Second to last, yes, I believe. Okay. Here we go. I found some stuff I wanted to get up here. Let us know where you're watching from. Check in the comments. Illinois, 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 Illinois,
United States. So jump on here. Well, that was a crappy video that we had there. That's not what I was looking for. That video is so loud. I can't hear what you're saying, Jason. Oh, was it? Okay. No, I just wanted to just, just open up the show. Let us know where you're watching from tonight, guys. Um, we got Illinois watching, Eaton, Ohio, Waterford, Wisconsin, Burnett, Texas, New York, Southern California, Seabree, Kentucky, Hereford, down and dirty with the Badger State Pullers. We'll show um, El Presidente's run from Highland. Did you have a good pass in Highland, Craig? No. Okay, so we don't want to show it? We can. I okay. drove too far to the right side, drove in the All shit. Right. Well, here we go. I still love you, Greg. So. Yeah, love you too. I think that's the only last place I can hear. <laughs> Outdoors. Your NSA implement current top three in the pro stock class. Three twelve sixty three. Randy Brew, two times two, leading the class. Two ninety eight. Travis Wildman sitting number two. And two ninety four point eight. Robbie Lemke in the class. Sexy on nine sixty. Sitting number three. That's your current NSA implement top three. Welcome, everybody. Um, February 27th, Jason Schultz here with our host, John Stranley, upper right corner, Greg Elsing, president of the Badger State Tractor Pullers. And uh, we're excited to be here. We do this every Monday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, down and dirty with the Badger State Tractor Pullers. If it's happening in the Badger State Truck and Tractor Pulling world, we're talking about it. And tonight, our goal, um, Dirt Drury was on a little bit ago. We just had the spring meeting this past weekend. And I kind of wanted to just kind of do a recap of the spring meeting. Dirk was going to come on and talk about um you know from tech and rules inside of it and i was going to have greg give us an update just on how schedules are looking sponsorship just overall health of the badger state tractor pullers and of course john from the announcer's chair just kind of give us an overview 
it's always good to see everybody. I talked to a lot of the guys and the guy, the gals that went down there and, and checked it out. And then I do want to do a, a shameless plug at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time tonight. We have Let's Grow Pulling, and I have the three major associations on tonight from 8 to 820. I got Greg Randall from the NTPA. And then from 8.20 to 8.40, I have Ron Stone from the Outlaws. And then 8.40 to 9 o'clock, I have John Mears from the Pole Polling League. I don't know if I've ever, guys, had a show lined up where I have three of the major associations in the United States before talking about the 2023 season. So I'm quite excited for that. So, um, Greg, can you text Dirk and see if he's doing okay? Because I saw him jump on. Or I can, if you want to start talking, Greg, about how the spring meeting went, I can text Dirk or give him a call quick. So. If you wanted to, uh, I've got to take my phone out of the thing here. I, oh, don't, I, no, no, don't do that then. I'm going to mute myself for a second. You and John start talking about spring meeting. I'm going to get a hold of Drury, okay? Well, uh, we had the spring meeting uh, last Saturday, and generally what we do is kind of go over the schedule and make sure uh, it's going to work for everybody. We had a couple of hiccups and stuff, and uh, I think we've got them all ironed out, uh, a couple of events that got scheduled on top of something else. I think I think we're getting, we're getting it worked out, but uh, – that, that's why we do it, just to make sure it all goes around. I don't want to sign a class somewhere if they have to go, you know, if we're splitting somebody up and that makes two poor shows, uh, even if it's with PI or NTPA or whoever it is, uh, you know, I try to make it so people don't have to choose one place or the other. We'll throw something else in there. But then, you know, we're, we're, we need a few more hooks for a couple of the classes and a couple of them have too many. That's just the way it is. You know, I don't know how to get around it. Uh, I, I push, uh, I really do try to make it even. A lot of people might not believe me, but I do. Uh, I mean, you were there, John, right? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. And, pretty healthy. How, how many hooks you got this year? Is it around 30 yet? Pulls? Uh, 26. We uh, leave forever. Richland Center and Plymouth have all decided to go a different direction with, the, I, I assume, a cheaper show, which is fine. You know, sometimes we out price ourselves out of some of the markets, you know. But we picked up Chopier and Dubuque County Fair this year, so it's about the same. We've had up to 32 and 35 hooks prior to this, but uh, I don't know. It's sometimes, uh, you know, some venues just can't support a Badger State show, the, you know, with attendance. You know, and everybody in the business understands that. Yeah, yeah. there's never, um, you can't have, yeah, I mean, not, got to have, you got to have, got to have what, Greg, at least probably 1,000, 1,500 people to pay for a Badger State show, right? You can't yep. ask your pro stocks and two-wheel drives to come out and pull for nothing. You know what I mean? Right. And the rubber's got to meet the road somewhere. And I know yeah. that, that that's just the honest to God truth. And I think yeah. a lot of people, Greg and John, think that these promoters are making all this money. You guys, it's really difficult. I mean, without sponsorship and stuff. I mean, John, you've been a promoter. Greg, you're a promoter. I promoted pools. Guys, it's scary, especially if you get a chance of rain. Elsie and I've stood with you so many times in Sauk City and watched that damn weather come in, and it's just like ah, you know, well, it just drives you insane. So I've I've been working on all pretty much all day today. I was working on the budget for Macville. Uh, Roger Baum runs a Macville show there, and we yep. we sent him the price for the show, and he says you gotta you gotta get me some money. It can't be that much, you know? So you try to, you know, you do what you can to make it work. Yeah. You know, you have to remove something, change something, put some cheaper classes in. They don't want to do that, but you know, and, and, and they want their show to be top notch, but some, you have a budget. There, there's no sense in these places doing it and not making money. Right. I want right. that hires us to make money. Well, and you want, Greg, you want repeat business too, because you can't build a big event and just have it a couple of years. You know what I mean? You have to, right. Like our biggest, our biggest Badger State pulls, your Darlington's, um, just for example, that how many years has that been going on guys? It takes tradition. It takes time. Yeah. I you know, think it's been there 50 years. Next year's our 50th anniversary. So we're going to, I think they've been there since the beginning. Yep. You know, that's one of the fairs that's been there since the beginning. And a lot of th times I too see that, uh, you know, and a younger fair board will be more aggressive and, uh, do the advertising and how many, you know, we, you do, you got your packages we've been selling for you for advertising and, yep. and it helps these places, but some of these people don't want to try it. You know, they just think right. that's an extra thousand bucks they shouldn't spend. Well, I think people are starting to give social media. Hey, Dirk. Hey. Um, some people are starting to understand that social media is important and hiring <clears throat> us beer money pulling team is like, it's like getting a radio ad or it's like printing a newspaper ad. We're going to push your event all over social media 
And, um, you know, we're working with some of the biggest promoters in the country. I mean, we're promoting a poll in Florida this weekend and a poll in California next weekend. And the week after that, we're promoting a poll in Pennsylvania. So, I mean, and, you right. know, obviously Beer Money is very involved with the Badger State social media as well. So we can put a big, a big, big, you know, we can get your event out to hundreds of thousands of people. Now, granted, Greg, maybe only 10,000 of those people live within an hour of your event. But you could get two to three hundred more people to come to your event every year, guys. That's an extra two, three thousand dollars, and that allows you to add the pro stocks, maybe. Because Greg, right. the most that, expensive class it, to get it, is what pros and two wheelers and Badger State. Uh, actually, uh, pros and uh, limited pros are the most expensive. Okay, and what? And then two wheelers and two wheelers and uh, diesel trucks. The three six class are the you know third and fourth. They're they're both the same price. Are you that, okay sharing? I mean, with the public, what you know, what a what a class cost, or do you want to stay away from I that? Can, I can share it. Uh, pro stocks are five thousand dollars a a class. Uh, limited pros are thirty five hundred. Uh, Two wheel drive trucks are three thousand. Diesel trucks are three thousand. Super wow. farms are twenty seven fifty. Um, I, hot, light light pros are twenty five hundred. Light limiteds are twenty five hundred. Uh, the the three O diesel truck class is fifteen hundred, you know, it's for our cheaper classes in uh, hot farms twenty five hundred. Yep. You know, I mean, and the insurance is a thousand bucks and sanctioning is two thousand dollars. And then you have sleds. And then you got to hire a sled. You know, so that's what, I'm really yeah. glad you said that, Greg, because I want I want to I want to take that from two angles. First of all, um, it costs three hundred to four hundred thousand to build a pro stock today. OK, yep. to compete yep. at the level you're competing at. <clears throat> and it's a five thousand dollar purse. If that doesn't show you how much of a hobby this sport still is. OK, because right. somebody might have heard, oh, five grand for a class. Wow. That sounds like a lot. But really, it's it's chicken feed in it. But I'm not picking on it um, right. because, OK, let's have pros at five grand. And then let's say we have hot farms at twenty five hundred. Now we're at seventy five hundred. Oh, I want some diesel trucks. So now I'm at ten <laughs> five. I really want that fourth class. Okay, I'm gonna add light limiteds. I'm at 10. Now I'm at 12.5. It's a thousand bucks for insurance, tech fee, 15,000, sled. So now I'm 17 to 18 thousand dollars into what what I would consider a premier Badger State show. You got noise, you got smoke, you got pros. Okay. Now what do I want to charge to get in? If I'm at a thousand bucks to get in, it's 10 bucks a person. That's 10 grand. If I get a thousand people at 15,000 or at 15 dollars, now I'm at break even. That's how that's how cut and tight it is, guys. Or that's how tight it is. For these promoters to run these events dirk you can talk about it with highland i was even playing highland videos dirk tonight sucking up to you and then you can't wow even thanks jason <laughs> <laughs> well, we had, one thing too, you know, if a promoter only makes five thousand dollars an event and there's a lot of them that only make five thousand they're happy with that but yeah. then if you if all of a sudden you want to get two thousand dollars more in towards badger state it goes to them profiting probably three thousand then is it worth them to do it, it they right. might not well, be worth do you want to take the chance, you know, to make three thousand dollars? I mean, that's what it is. And then, guys, most most promoters are buying rain insurance now. Um, right. You're crazy not to buy rain insurance now. Um, yep. th that's another expense. And then you have to go out, and then you're knocking on the same sponsors over and over and over again. And again, we're not whining. If you're if you're a polling fan, I'm. We're trying to educate you. We want. I mean, I think the more you know, the more you know, the more engaged you are, and the more you're like, hey. I'm going to go help my local pool. And we don't care if you have a Badger State. There's people watching this show right now from all over the country. Go help your go help your local promoters. If you right. truly want to grow pulling and you want to see more fans in the stands and you want to bring, I mean, Badger State fans are beyond the luckiest in the world because they get to see the top level pro stocks in the country. And if, if you guys didn't mm -hmm. prove that at Louisville this year, you went down and competed against the best of best and you put your tractors in the finals. Okay. Right. That's the measuring stick of what it is. There is not a regional association anywhere in the country, anywhere, that has Grand National Champions Tour level pro stock tractors, super farms, four ones. We, Greg, we talked about this at SHIP. Um, and I know tonight's more about the spring meeting. We're kind of going off on a tangent, but that's it's about education. Right. But yeah, but you still, Jason, you still need to have your poll get sponsors. I mean, little town of Highland, that's what we do. I mean, with all you, and you got to get a lot of them. And our poll is almost paid for before we open the gate. 
And that's, that's what it takes. But and I don't but know. Uh, you go to like Baraboo. You know, Baraboo, Sauk County has built their poll up. Now, they don't have a lot of sponsors for the poll, and they signed eight classes and running two tracks there, but they have built it up where they've made a good poll and people are coming to it. That's Well, they got two tracks now. They got yep. a good track now. They got those stupid wagon wheels out of the way, right? Yep. And uh, you got Randy <laughs> Brew from Baraboo helping build the track. And I know, right. like, we like to pick on the booster, but he knows what he's doing. And Scott Zerzo, I mean, you have a former sled operator, still a sled operator, build the pulling track. Yep. That helps as well. And Sauk County, I mean, it's strong for pulling, but you're right. And those fans, I mean, Greg, I remember six, seven years ago, the stands were half full. Shit, you got to get there an hour yep. early now to get a seat, Greg. You know, right now, oh. they're lined up high, down Highway 33 waiting to get in there. If they know they have yeah. to get in there, you know, it's and, and then, but it takes time to build it there and you have to make it fun and affordable. Yep. Yeah, it does. You do. Uh, put on a good show and you have to keep it moving. But uh, Dirk's right when you're starting out, you have to, you have to, uh, you have to get sponsors. And if you keep them sponsors and cover the show, then you're making some money. Yeah. And it's, it's a community effort. One yeah. guy can't do it. You know, and then some of the smaller towns have, have some of the bigger success. I mean, your Highlands, your Darlingtons, uh, and I don't want to leave anybody out. I know I always end up doing that. It's easy to talk about Dirk right, right. now, but Highlands been, Hugely successful. I mean, Highlands a town of what a thousand people, Dirk. Eight fifty. I mean, that's that's eight hundred fifty humans. And if we that, can, if we can just, pole, if we can just have a poll without rain, which is something you know all about, Jason. <laughs> I make it rain. If uh, Greg, <laughs> Adam, Adrian, and Greg, um, if they're having a dry summer, they'll say, Jason, could you please schedule a poll in our hometown so we could have a little bit of rain? Right. So, uh, we need to bring it on. But yep. that's fun. So, if, you know, if you're a fan right now or if you're a promoter, share your stories, share your questions, because this is what this is what these live shows is all about. We want yeah. you we want you to peek behind the curtain a little bit, know what's going on. Um, you, these guys are working hard. You know that there's that new Netflix show, Full Swing, where they're yeah. going into the you know, they're going into these golfers lives. And we started <clears> doing <throat> it, John and Greg, by visiting these shops and showing stuff we we're going to do more of that we're doing some of it with beer money with behind our helmet series and you know and john and greg have been awesome and going out and um uh and visiting the shops and if anybody wants to sponsor down and dirty with the badger state tractor pullers get a hold of elsing uh he is we're all on board on this and that'll give them a little extra fuel money to be beating around and, and going to people's shops and you know spending time there and doing some of the shows from there tonight i really wanted to focus back in on the spring meeting but you know, well, last week was all about farm show. Go ahead, Greg. Well, we're talking about that sponsorship. Uh, uh, Trip Downing and John Coots and uh, I can't remember who all is standing. They all kicked in a few hundred bucks for us for fuel money for John and I. At awesome. the meeting. That was great. You know, so, so uh, I want to thank them guys on here, I guess, for doing that. If they're so, watching. Uh, Nick Gallett says plug for the Helenville Super Nationals. So that's their hometown pool. You know, yep. um, well, that and um, what's your jig, uh, Jefferson? So, Helen yep. Miller is a small, small event in the Fireman's Festival, and they pack them right in there from one end to the other, both nights. And they got different organizations both nights. It's neat to see. And the other, like that. <clears throat> another thing I want to say about sponsorship, guys say if they sponsor you, you better go back there and say, Hey, thanks for sponsoring. If you're going to see it in, in my hometown now, it's Kaiser Chrysler. It used to be all Chevrolet. They sponsored pull for Badger State in the fall. And <clears throat> I really wanted a GMC truck, but I said, well, I'm going to buy a Chevy from my local guy here because they sponsor us. And I mean, we have to have fans mm -hmm. and have to support these people that sponsor it or they're not going to do it. Yep. You know, so just, just so you know, that's out there guys support the people that are sponsoring this thing you love. You don't necessarily have to buy it from them. Mm -hmm. just Even if you, and when I announce, and John does the same thing, I'll say, even if you don't, you know, like to Greg's point, even if you don't have to spend any money there, if you know the manager or the owner, just thank them. Just thank them yep. for their support because they allow you uh, to keep a cheaper ticket price. You and know, and I'll, say, I'll say one thing on top of that, too, about a Badger State show is we've got the best announcers anywhere in the country. Yep. Yep. You owe me 100 bucks, Stranley. <laughs> no more number two out of you. I know it. Damn it. Uh, Greg, we're going to take care of it. All right. 
So right. um, we got off on a little bit of a tangent there, but that's what happens when you get bright minds like us, you know, together on a show talking about that. But Greg has said to me multiple times behind the scenes, Jason, I want people to know what Badger State's all about. Mm-hmm. That was Greg's vision of putting the show together. You get your announcer, John, you get Greg, the president, and you, you, you do a weekly show and you talk about polling. And, you know, this show mm-hmm. reaches 50,000 people on Facebook and YouTube every week. By the end of the week, it's touched 50,000 timelines. Now, I don't know if people watch it for four or five minutes or they watch the full hour, but they can also listen to it on iTunes and Spotify. But you know what? It, it's not hurting anything at all uh, for, for the sport of truck and tractor pulling and for the Badger State tractor pullers. So at, that, at this point, I'd like to kind of circle back now that we have Dirk on the show. Again, the spring meeting was last weekend. Um, what is a spring meeting, Greg? Can you kind of talk about the, the idea of the spring meeting and, and why you have one? Well, the number the main reason is to get the schedule out. A little, I shouldn't say the main reason. We get the schedule out, but the main reason I feel to do it is we need the people. This is the time we contact our sponsors and, you know, people we need. You know, Kelly and uh, Amy and, and Emily got hopefully got some of the, some more contacts for sponsorship and get at it because we we don't go looking for them. When, when the competitors, the pullers find a sponsor, they work with them girls to make sure that it's uh, taken care of. And it's up, and we, I always say it's up to the puller to make sure that sponsor's happy because I don't want him to say next year, I ain't sponsored because you spelled my name wrong. Well, somebody's got to tell us if it's wrong. If we don't know it, you know, we, everybody has to be involved. We have, we have to involve every member in the club in this, you know, to keep it moving forward. And we've got some very aggressive guys out there getting sponsorship. And that's what made us what we are. Yep. You know, we had, we gave $120,000 in paints this year. And one hundred thirty thousand dollars to the Children's Hospital, plus paid out. You know what? What runs through the checkbook in a year? A million bucks? I don't know. Yeah. So, it, it it's pretty, pretty impressive numbers when you really start com- comparing it to other clubs and other states. And and anyways, when I talk to the other states, we pay less to our competitors than most states do. You know, if people don't know that. I, I didn't know that, Greg. So yeah. Yep, we are not. We're probably the highest paid uh, club in the state, but Wisconsin pays little compared to Ohio and Indiana and them guys. I shouldn't say little. I say we pay less, but that's gotcha. that's the way it is. And Illinois used to pay really well because the state reimbursed it, but uh, they stopped doing that now. The state reimbursed them. Yeah, back in the day. Uh, it's probably been 10 years since they did this. So if the, if the show at Freeport cost $20,000, if they could prove they paid us $20,000, the state gave them 20, but uh, they don't do that. Wow. Anymore. Yep. <laughs> That's why Illinois broke. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think the governor, sure. I think one of the last five governors are in jail or something. Somebody said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't think it's real. I think they have a nice jail, Greg. I mean, it's nice as jail can be, buddy. So is what I've been yeah. told. So, so good. Right. Um, I'm just playing some Highland videos in the background with no sound, so we can just keep chatting. Dirk, from a tech perspective and a rules perspective, what came out of the uh, of the 2023 spring meeting with the um, with the Badger State Tractor Pullers? Well, I've been doing this tech thing almost 30 years. And that was probably the most informative tech school that I've had in a long time. I mean, John did a very excellent job in keeping us notified of what's going on out there that we have to be, uh, to have to be looking for. And there's some pretty cool tricks that people are doing with things out there. And it's, you don't know how to, you don't know to text something unless you know that there's a problem. So now that we've got the problem addressed, now we can go look for it. And for me anyway, it was very, it was a very good tech school and I come out of there and learn a lot. Yeah. So John Mears came up from Indy and uh, we're going to have him on our Let's Grow Polling show in about an hour. He's going to come on and talk about the 2023 and PPL. What does it mean to have like, you know, the leader of the pro polling league show up to your spring meeting, Dirk? What, I mean, the validity, the, the, I guess makes it real. I mean, how am I, how do I say that properly, Dirk? Um, 
I'm glad he's there instead of sending somebody up that you've never seen before. Um, yeah. And Greg can feel the same way. We, we've known John for years and years, and it's, uh, we've got a personal friendship with him. We've got a professional relationship with him, and he'll call me up for advice on a rule change. I'll call him up on advice on a rule change, and you work back and forth, and you work together, and you try to come up with a solution. My wife just yelled credibility from the other rooms. It gives you credibility, Dirk. That's the word I was looking for when John Mears shows up to your spring meeting. So yeah, and I don't. I, all this I don't want to. You know, talking about Badger State. Um, the last thing I want to do is come off as arrogant. But the Badger State, and I've been told that by many people that Badger State members don't know how good they have it sometimes when it comes to when they pull into a poll, how things are run and, you know, they get tacked. They, I'll, I'll have, I'll have day members come in there and you, you say, well, I got to tech your tractor. And they, they look at me like uh, they just saw a ghost and they're like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> well, I got to check this and this and this. <clears throat> yep. So <laughs> when the, it, it, Time you tried to pull their air shut off and you couldn't pull it. Right. You know, it was all rusted and, in. And, and they say, well, nobody's pulled that before. Yeah. Well, don't you want it to work if you're in trouble? All right. Yes, you do. Yeah. Yes, you do. Yep. I mean, that's, I mean, we're taking a tractor mainly, mainly what we do is a safety check. But there are other things that, you know, we'll check fuel, we'll check a turbo, we'll check water, we'll check performance, stuff like that. But the main goal is it to make sure that tractor is safe for the driver and the crowd, you know. And we, um, we were every, every, every safety rule on a tractor is because of an accident at one time or another. Yeah, everyone almost has a rule or a name behind it, you know, like the so-and-so right. rule. So, you know. <clears throat> That what we were the first club to, uh, I, I want to say, throw out or uh, recognize a set of illegal tires. Yep. We were. Nobody else has done it. Nobody's, I don't know if anybody has done it since then. No, there was a lot of chatter about it, Greg. You know, obviously uh, going around and you guys, you know, the Badger State guys were the first yeah. one to do something about it. I was at a, uh, uh, down at Wagle's Pole, Rumble by the Refuge, a set of tires showed up and, um, they had to trim them down. Like the tire cutter actually had to trim them down there on the thing. Tires, especially in the tractor classes now, guys, tires is, to me is the biggest, uh, the biggest hurdle, not hurdle, but it's the biggest area of opportunity for a puller. You know, we've seen a tractor show up that was 10 feet back and they put a different set of tires on. Now they're, they're 10 feet out there. And, um, right. you know, well, I got to watch John, I got to watch John measure a set of uh, Mitos at uh, a Wildman's. Wildman's went out and took the pro pullers off and, the whole shots and went out and put the mitas on before they pulled. And when that thing came back in broadband, you know, Epperson from the NTPA and uh, John right there was right there, you know, from PPL. And they got that tractor jacked up and were rolling the wheels and doing the circumference and the width. They, they were all over it. You know, they that, were all over it. So that's after we told, we showed them how math works. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. Should I tell that story or not? Yeah, I might as well. It's a Badger State show. It's all good. It is. It is. Well, they had the down in Louisville. They had the rule there. the The tires are seventeen and a half feet, seventeen point five feet around is what the road said. So the guys were measuring them at seventeen feet five inches. Well, seventeen and point five feet is seventeen feet six inches. And they they actually had a guy from Wisconsin that already had called back to Mark Korth and was loading up a set of tires to bring down to him because these weren't legal by half an inch or something. And uh, once they got the math right, they were legal. You know, so it's it's funny. You know, it's fun. And Jim Jim Loburn of all people caught him, uh, corrected him, and they wouldn't listen at first until we were adamant that hey, this you're measuring wrong, because we've done this many times. We were the first ones to do it. Yeah. Well, I've seen you guys like over the years um, at the spring meeting down at Nora's. I mean, I've seen new sets of tires in the back of people's pickups, and you guys, you know, Dirk was out there with you, Greg, and you were going through those, you know, throughout the years as time because it used to just be a Firestone show. Yeah. You know, now we got parks and Mitos and hole shots and this and that and, and different things like that. So it's yeah. um it's all good. Oh, Patrick Pack. 
we, we woke up Patrick Hack. Yeah. Um, Pat says, Dirk, talk just a little bit about tires, turbos, but especially about the blankets not being put on correctly. We've seen a bunch installed wrong at the pull and chip show on it also, and we will be enforcing that this year. So, Well, John was actually <clears throat> standing next to this tractor that was warming up, and he was standing toward the back of the engine. All of a sudden, he felt this breeze on his face like there's a fan blowing on him, and he looked down, and – the blanket was probably four inches away from the block. And this guy had this inspection hole cut in his bell housing. And you could look right down and see the flywheel going around. And he had their straps on the side of a scatter blanket that you're supposed to run them ahead toward the block and attach them so that will give support to the blanket. And this guy had them tucked in and, you know, he was told they're there for a reason. You got to attach them to your block. And, you know, that flywheel being exposed is a huge, oh. that put us all out of business and overnight. Yeah. That's really would. something you're going to have to watch. A lot of guys have cut them straps off already because they never got inspected. You know, well, and like I said, this is one of the things I learned at this at this tech meeting that you need to look for now. Yeah. You know, and when you, when you guys hear dirt say bad for all of us, if somebody, you know, if something comes off a tractor guys and goes in the crowd and kills somebody that it, it, that's going to be very, very, very bad for pulling. And that's, the dirt. that's what he's trying to say guys. If, so, if we keep pulling after that, it's going to be a lot more expensive for insurance. Yeah. Insurance will be in through the roof. So, yeah. Yeah. So imagine days. Pretty lucky. We've had a broken arm and a few things here and there. But nothing ever very serious. Yeah. Not yeah got, this is perfect. Not Travis Schwaba, your Grand National Diesel Super Stock Champion, says rules have three purposes. Safety, to keep uh, competition equal, and to control the cost of class with limits. I mean, that's that's well said. That's well said. Thank you, Travis. That's very well said. Piping that in there on that. So super what a, excited for that. You have limited rules on, say, Super Farm and stuff. Them are the limits, you know, so now I mean, my thought on component track going to a four one. Maybe the chassis is the limit. You know, maybe you put power out of it. And yep. have a, you know, but I, you know, I, I'm really on the fence with the eight eighty five hundred pound the light pros because I've seen some of them things ground so thin that I think they they wouldn't hold water. You know, some of the bell housings and stuff. So I don't. You know, I, I'm not a hundred percent against components, but I think there's classes that need it before other classes. I think they're the class that needs it the most. I, I do too. They're them. Some of them tractors are growing pretty thin. Well, they're making. I mean, they're making more horse. They're making more ponies than the limited pros are now. You I mean, like you said, in yep. a thousand pounds less. And um, you know, I, I talked to a couple of light pro guys after the show. And I actually had a couple of pullers actually text me that want to build a light pro uh, and pull with Badger State, but they don't know if they should start with an ag chassis or if they should just order their component now. And that's really where the, that's why I was texting you, Greg, a little bit on Saturday. But I told you I got it. I talked to a couple of light pro pullers and they kind of gave me a feel for how they feel the next couple of years are going to go with components in the light pro stock class. And if, for those of you that are wondering where this is coming from, the, the loop, uh, the pro pulling league uh, silver series are, are allowing uh, component chassis in 2023 on the silver series. Uh, yep. We will see that uh, with some co sanctioning with our Badger State classes, Macville, Hillsborough, Freeport. And they yep. do have to weigh 200 pounds less, Greg. Am I saying that right? Yep. Yes. So um, you'll see a, a component run at 8,300 pounds, and then you'll see a uh, an ag chassis or a cast ass, as, as Stranley and I like to call them from the announcer stand. Um, uh, they'll they'll weigh 8,500 pounds still. So right. And we, and I talked to John about it too. I said if they're if they're if the components are still walking away with it, you might have to take more away from them. And he he thought the same. thing. 200 pounds is not, but that's where they're starting. Yep. You know, is it well, it's kind of like when um, you guys let um, or when Badger State let LK tractors into the into the light limited super stock class. You know, yep. there was some weight I think was taken away, and um, I mean, honestly, honest to God, the, the light limited super stock class was really rebounded 
with the addition of the of the alcohol tractors the last couple of years and really puts on a hell of a good show and nobody's been dominant and you guys nope. have done a really good job with that so nope it, it has been that that's been working well you yeah. know that's a class I like to get a few more hooks for it too and you try to but it's just you know it is what it is you, you, we have a menu system out there and I'll push push stuff somewhere if I can but sometimes you know uh, yeah. people want what they want Stranley, um, from the from the announcer's chair, if you will, and thank you for going live um, at the banquet or at the spring meeting this past week. I was not able to make it down. I had some work stuff I had to take care of. Um, what was the overall feel? What was the overall buzz just from the pullers and, you know, from you as an announcer of the Badger State Tractor Pullers? I think everybody's excited when spring comes because they know that it's not far away and we'll be pulling again, but... I think everybody wants to make sure that they see what the schedule is, kind of get figured out where their classes are, what's new. Um, like Dirk said, the rules, um, and they do get clarified, you know, rather well. And there's times that, you know, you're going to have some squabbles over some rules, and that's competition. But I think all in all, everybody knows that at the end of the day, you know, it's for the greater good of your class and or the club. And with that, too, with John Mears coming and, and Badger State, um, it's better that you have, you know, clear transparency with your rules between the national and the state level. And it makes it so guys can, you know, if they want to go to Missouri and pull and we don't pull, they can go down there or go to Ohio or, or wherever. And I think that's better for pulling too. Same thing with, you know, if you got a tractor, go help somebody out in another place and become friends with them. Hey, come to my hometown pull and pull with us too, you know, and, uh, you see that from time to time. It just, you know, helps out the pulling community in general. The other thing I touch on, you guys were talking about earlier, I didn't want to interrupt you, but Dirk saying, you know, the things about how Badger State is done as an announcer, Jason, you'll you'll catch this as soon as I say this. When you go to a poll and I announce a poll, you have the, the Badger State announcers there that have – you know, the sponsors for Badger State, they're all listed out. They're all, you know, very clear to read. There's an announcer book that's got the schedule in. It's got things about, you know, hats, T-shirts, so on and so forth. Uh, where to find us on the websites, Facebook, and all the sponsors. And when you go to a poll that has that set up, and then also the poll sponsors are all listed nice and neat, makes your job as an announcer easier. You can fit them in there, sprinkle them in there as you go through the night. But the biggest piece of the puzzle are the girls sitting there next to you or guys, whoever's operating a computer, feeding you the information for the poll. You got to have that. Without having them there do that to keep the information flowing with the class, be able to read the class results for, you know, keep the people posted with the top three, you know, throughout the class and then your sponsors in there. You need that person there. You, you can't do it by yourself as an announcer and then, try and get the end of the class and take your hands and shoes off and get figured out who's the lead, who, who won it and who didn't, you know? So it's, it's a big, big piece to it. Yep. Yep. And that's yeah, been, the people, but the people behind the scenes. Yep. It's a lot. And that's, I don't think a lot of people understand it. You know, we go to a Badger state event. There's what five, six tech officials behind the scenes. Uh, there's always two people that, that run all the, the business side of it between the, entering in people for classes and pit passes and stuff like that. And <laughs> got two announcers, yep. depending on the event and, um, you know, the trailer, get all the, the stuff out. I mean, it's there's a lot to it. It's a business. You know, it yep. is a business. Uh, the video you got to run couple, like a business. Yep. The video boards a couple people and. Uh, you know, just getting everything out there and getting it going and having the equipment there to measure, you know, say you want to do turbos or a fuel system, having it all there and set up and ready to go. You know. So I think all in all, the spring meeting is very you know, Kelly does a great job getting that stuff. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Kelly and Amy uh, and, and Tracy and Emily, all of them that help out Angie um, Kathy yep. Meyer uh, that, that bounce around with all of us throughout the summer. And, and even when we're, we're pulling two, two pulls in the same night, two different locations to, to pull that off. How many 
state level organizations do that and they have the people that we do that are capable of doing that and still put on a, a good show. That's, that's right. a feat in itself. Having the people and the iron to do both of them. Yes. yes. But it's a lot of how fun. Many, how, many lot times, of how, how many times have our polls ever last year went past midnight? None. You None. know, what can, can another state organization, I know I'm tooting our horn again, but how many other state organizations or national organizations can say that? Yep. Get it done. Our, and our pullers are up online, ready to rip. They know they have to be sit ass in seat when that sled pulls back to get going. Yep. You know, we don't have to push them. They're trained. The guys do this. Right. We yeah. ain't pushing nothing. Yeah. Yep. Until so the biggest thing is, is you want to watch pulling, you don't want to watch them grading the track. So grade no. the track, get out of the way. The next one's ready to go. Let's go. Yep. Yep. And, and everybody get done so you can visit when you're done. But if it's midnight, nobody's going to stand around and visit for a minute. You're out of there. You know, most of our pulls, I would say, are done by 10 o'clock. You know, yes. that's what the fairs want. The fairs, it, the fairs, when you sell a show, the fair wants it done at 945, 930, because people will stop and have a sandwich or let their kids go for a ride, or they'll go to the beer tent and have a beer, and once they're in there, they've got them. But if it's after 10, especially on a weeknight, guys say, as everybody else, well, I'm going home, I got to go to work tomorrow. It's 10 o'clock, it's time to go. That seems to be the witching hour when, when, when you're selling a show. You know, so you want to have yeah. especially Any, anything after three, three and a half hours, and people start fading away. Yep. Yeah. Well, and to Greg's point, you know, a standalone event like a Highland, like we're watching video from right now, you know, they there's not like a it's not like there's a fair that they have to get out to, but they don't want to go all night either because you lose your crowd. But I've sat with Greg at, in, in the Dells, and you know, these fair boards come in, they're like, hey, we want a three hour show because. um, well, you don't realize, guys, these fairs get 20, 30 percent of the take of the midway. So bring people in to watch the pool and then they want to back out on that on that midway, um, spending money, going on rides and eating seven dollar pork sandwiches and stuff like that to Greg's point. So, again, I, I like to share stuff like this because I really want the fans and the pullers to understand some of the stuff behind the scenes, why some of the decisions are made that Greg and the leadership of the Badger State have to have to make, um, you know. Like, yeah, wow, I, I really wish we could add another class. Well, we just don't have the budget for it. You know, I've been, I've been on those discussions with Greg as well um, on what, you know, what they can or cannot afford um, to, to pull stuff like that. And I want to circle back to the tires real quick. Somebody messaged in there about the tires. The taller a tire, the more footprint you're going to have on that track. And is that, that's why we have the 210-inch tire, right? That's a rule, 210, right, Greg? <clears throat> right. Yep. So if you have a 212 or a 214, that's putting more tread, if you will, more tire. And, that, and that's why that tire is illegal. And then obviously the same with width on the fire print and, and you know, the, the, the tire print, stuff like that it all works out like that. So just so wanted to throw that in there. There's another organization with tires. They're going to inspect them one time and they're going to brand them. And now they're going to say them tires are illegal. So, and we've been through this with certified weight and bullshit like that. What happens now is guys are going to go put a different rim on it. They're going to put a narrower rim on it, make them a little taller or a wider rim, and it would make them a little wider, whatever you're going to do. But it's it's not going to be the same when you change the rim width. You know? So you have to inspect them tires when them people show up to compete. I can't inspect it. We cannot inspect a set of tires in May and say you're good for the year because Joe Blow is going to go home and put a different set of rims on them and change them. Yep. You know, so you that's why we that's why we don't do clutch numbers. Yep. You know, you you warp a floater and put a new floater in. Now your clutch paper that you certified means nothing. I pulled in I pulled in a big pull in Wisconsin one time and I didn't have my clutch certified, but I had my old clutch sitting there. And I parked the truck out at the truck stop out of, out of town a little bit and went in and had my clutch inspected. Fifteen minutes later, I was back with the tractor when I was pulling. I had my inspection sheet there. <laughs> You know, I was kind of crooked to do, but I, it was, <laughs> you know, I've done it, you know, and, and I know a lot of people that have done that, you know, <clears throat> there, but that is what's in my tractor, you know, so that, I don't even know if they do that anymore. Right? I'm not I, I have no idea. I'm not yeah. sure. Um, again, down and dirty with the Badger State Tractor Pullers. Today's February 27th. We got John Stranley, Greg Elsine. Our host every Monday night, Dirk Drury, puts us tonight as well. Just kind of doing a nice wrap-up of the spring meeting. Uh, we're going to get back on the road here 
and try to get into some people's shops or houses or uh, not necessarily, we don't have to be online, online, but get some more pullers back on here as now we head into, we're basically three months away from pulling season. I want to know from you pullers and fans that are watching right now, uh, what what poll are you going to next or what poll are you most excited about here in 2023? Not that you've seen some tentative schedules and stuff like that. If you could just type that into the chat while Greg and John and Dirk are talking like that. So it'd be kind of cool. So I think uh, I think if it's a Badger State crew, I'll bet you the benefit poll will be the first one there. That'll that'll be our first event this okay. year, right now. Yep. Is uh what are the ballpark dates on that else? June 10th, I believe. Okay. Yep. No. So there's nothing in um, there's nothing down there in that little town in Illinois where Rod Wickman's involved in. Um, they had fifty trucks there last year, so they're gonna go with the truck. Okay. You know they don't have to pay anything extra for that, where our show costs quite a bit. Yep. Uh, what I believe happened, but who knows? But uh, yeah, it's uh, it'll be fun, and then Macville's a week after that one, and that'll be a big one. And then it, yep. it, it, Dirk. Hmm. Uh, Terry Benson says, is there any questions about hitches on ag chassis? Because he's building two tractors this winter and he heard something about it or is it just rumors about hitches on ag chassis? Do you know what he's talking about? No. He's talking about, the, talk about the, the hitch angle. The hitch, the hitch angle, angle is 15 degrees. Yeah, but also yeah. it can only be... No more... Up. No more uh, than 15 degrees up or no more than 15 degrees down. Okay, yeah, I saw Mears had a tool at Louisville, Dirk. I watched him as they were checking hitch heights. He was setting, I don't remember if it was like a little, like if it was phone or something on there, but I've seen you have something. You or Elsie had yep. something on your phone as well that yep. did that uh, degree deal. So, and yep. It, and it, we learned it's got to be set on the hitch point, not the side of the hitch. Right. You know, okay. Because yeah, people are machining that a little bit different now, of trying to get an advantage. No, but uh, and uh, the other thing is, we got to that I'm going to probably do more of this summer is um, get some plumb bobs out, find the center line of the rear rear uh, the rear axle, and then you measure from the hook point of the draw bar down to the ground, roll the tractor away, and measure that point. If it's under 18 inches, you're illegal because that's a huge advantage. Moving the draw bar in towards the main axle, shortening Correct. it up. Correct. And you can only be so long, too. I've tried the longer link, too, thinking that would work, but it don't. We've all tried different and no, things. And no step draw bar. Yep. But there's a lot of, you know, in some of the tractors, there has to be with a cast ass, you have to have a little bit of a step in it sometimes. Correct. Right? Just so they get it high enough. But, you know, it's, it's kind of a judgment call there. Right. So explain I mean, to the, the fans about the step draw bar of your regular square hitch, you know, your regular square hitch uh, would be even all the way through. They basically make a little thicker. Then they mill down half of it, it slides in there. So where your hitching point is higher, you know, it'll be like an inch higher on your hitch itself. So that point of it will be be up higher. So you can get the height for your, your 20 inch hitch height or whatever your hitch height is for whatever Correct. your class. That's, that's what Dirk's talking about on the step hitch. So it's not two different hitches or something. It's one hitch. It's just made thicker and then they mill it down so that the back part is stepped up higher, basically. Yep. And then the a down part is where you measure your 15 degrees. There has, I've seen some hitches quite a few years ago, but they were on pro stocks that was actually a piece of draw bar that came out and then it went up and then another piece of draw bar went out. Well, I know it sounds stupid, but if you pull on that hard enough, you can stretch that draw bar and it'll give you another half inch of draw bar. Is the reason for that rule. Yeah, get some swing hits. Come down, down the back, Terry's asking. What's that? Nothing about the bracing coming down the back, Terry Benson is asking. Um, I looked at that picture that John had 
And the more I look at it, and like you said, you can't tell a whole lot from a picture. But I first looked at it and went, wow, he's got a high hitch point up there. But, you know, if you look at an angler hitch, you've got steel that's above the hitch that basically bolts onto your um, old PTO housing. So the picture he had, I even called him today. I said, so what's wrong with that hitch? I mean, he's got a tie, he's got adjustment bolts on the bottom of the hitch. And to me, there was nothing wrong with that hitch. Uh, because it 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 operates the same as a an angler hitch. It just had the two rods that come down from like where the top link was is what made you think. But in all reality, it's it's to the back of the rear end housing. It doesn't come down at an angle, so you're really not getting any pull down like you are a top link. So that I know which tractor he's talking about, and I. I relayed a message to the owner of the tractor says, don't worry about it. Don't cut it apart. Bring it to the first pull. I'll look at it. And I think it'll be fine. But that's another trouble with pulling too. is rumors get around and this guy calls this guy, this guy calls this guy. And by the time it gets around, it ain't nowhere near true. Right. I mean, we're, we never outlawed uh, nothing. The other part of the hitch, too, for the fans to know, it's made out of one piece. It's not welded together. It's a one Correct. piece billet piece of steel that's milled out. So you can't just take a piece, weld a piece like you're talking about. It's got to be one made piece milled out, you know, machined out. So it's not all welded together. And we have a, and there's a secondary hitch, you know, a safety hitch. If the first one to break is supposed to catch you, I think they'll all break when they do happen, if anything happens. But that cannot be part of your primary hitch. It's got to be connected separately. Yes. Correct. Anchored separately. And so. you also need, and that, that's the only thing about that hitch that John showed a picture of, and I can't remember, Greg, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know if it had a bolt that screwed down on the top of the hitch from keeping the hitch of going up. I don't know either. I, I don't remember it. I don't remember either, but I don't remember seeing if there was a bolt that goes down. Schultz, shut your dog up. Yep, I'm trying. I'm trying. I think uh, I think he knows you're on the show, Dirk, and he doesn't like it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he definitely said Dirk Drury. <laughs> The biggest thing too, the hitch, like you're saying, is so the fans don't, you know, don't understand and get into the nuts and bolts of it. It's got a single mount in the front of the hitch, and then the pin is in there, and then in the back, like you said, there's two like adjustment bolts that adjust it up, so that gets you your height. And then it's got to be locked down, either a top bolt in it or something in it, so it doesn't flop or raise up in there at all. It's solid. When you leave after the tech official. Just your hitch and measures it. That's it. Now, the height of it, too, you cannot be more than 20 inches, but it's not saying you, you can't lower it an inch and run a 19 inch draw bar. That's up to you, but can't be any higher than whatever your hitch rule is, but it's still got to be solid. You cannot move around side to side or up and down. It's got to be solid when you're done. And there's a rule, too, that you cannot, when you're hauling your tractor down the road in your trailer, you cannot chain. You're chaining your track down to with that hit. That hit only could get used at the event. And, you're, you know, and the guys should inspect them all the time in case bolts are coming loose, too. So the biggest so. thing there, yes, yeah, is, is bouncing down the road. You stress that hitch out or the brackets back in there, crack the brackets. And then when you pull, that's when that hitch will come out. And that's the biggest, biggest thing. Right. It's only meant for one reason, and that's it. Yep. Um, I just want to say one more thing about the spring meeting. Um, I think all of us in this room can agree that what Corey Neff said is so true. He's a mechanic and helps out. I think he's a hired man for uh, our late friend of ours, Gerald Gerlock, and made the comment like I kind of did at the banquet before I was blubbering all over the place. But how much of a family this organization is, and 
people don't understand it unless you're a part of it. Um, some of us take it for granted, but when you need something, whether it be a part on your tractor to get on the track, there's 10 guys on the dead run to their hauler getting you fixed up and they might even be in your class. And if there's a guy talked to Craig Ladwig today about the same subject, you know, back in the day with his son that had the cancer and the benefit and the support. And he just, he says, I just can't believe the amount of money that came out of this club to help my kid out. Um, I said the same thing about my transplant last year and the support from the Badger State Pullers. And I had two of them that live more than an hour away from me offered to plant my corn. And if you're, if you, if you're not involved in that kind of a family atmosphere, that's why everybody pulls. And when the poll's done, very seldom do you see trailers leaving the, the pit area with the poll still going on because everybody wants to um, talk to each other because they're all friends. And we want to sit down, have a drink, talk about the poll, talk about whatever. And that's the part that makes Badger State Badger State, in my mind, is it's your summer family. And, you know, like Corey reiterated, they, they just couldn't believe the outpouring. And that's what makes me proud to be part of this organization more than our, our vehicles, our performance of our vehicles, or anything. That's what makes Badger State Badger State in my opinion. Yep. Yep. I agree a hundred percent. Jason's muted. <laughs> Somebody Jason's finally muted. did it. I was, uh, my dog, my dog was still telling Dirk to shut up, but I, I well, didn't get to hear that. So, um, I want to wrap this up guys. I need, I need to wrap this up. I'm sorry. This has been an amazing show. Dirk, thank you for your time tonight. Greg or John, do you know the times for the Gerlach uh, celebration of life this Saturday and where? Starts at one Gerlach Farm. Okay. And I, I know we posted it on Badger State. I'll make sure it gets up there again. But if anybody can come and, and, and show up and celebrate Gerald. And, and John, uh, John and I are going to be there. And if you have a funny, we're going to do a tribute show to Gerald. I haven't talked to my cat. I shouldn't have say this, but I think he'll be all right with it. Uh, I talked to Corey about it. But uh, if you have a funny quote, or a uh, story to share about Gerald, please come see us. We're going to be there, right, John? And uh, we're done with our next show. Perfect. So. Perfect. Well, guys, thank you for your time tonight. Join us every Monday night here, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for Down and Dirty with the Badger State Tractor Pullers. Thank you, Dirk Jury, for your insight tonight. No thank, problem. You for being, thank you for being part of Badger State, John and Greg, as well as being our weekly host. Um, everybody have a great night. Uh, I'm going to head over and start up Let's Grow Pulling. Thanks for watching, everybody. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Thanks.